I'm back at Royal Enfield at the Technology Centre. I'm here with Adrian Sellers, lead designer. And obviously, for those of you who have seen the previous video about this Royal Enfield Bike Shed collaboration build, I'm obviously here to find out how the build is going. It's been a while. Adrian, how are we doing? We're doing really well. Why don't you come back into the workshop and, and we'll yeah. have a look at how it's doing. Let's, let's definitely do that. I cannot wait to see how pen and paper and digital drawings are translated to, to flesh and steel. Step into and... our office here. Oh, wow. Well. Okay, so obviously we're supposed to position ourselves nicely so Gunn can get a good shot, but actually I need a second to take this in. It looks absolutely brilliant. It looks really, really good. I mean, the whole stance of it is just right. I feel as though I feel as though I know how it's going to handle, how it's going to ride, even what it's going to sound like. It looks absolutely brilliant. Are you happy? Very happy. I mean, you wouldn't be here if we weren't uh, at least pretty confident with what we've got. It's just superb. Absolutely superb. Obviously, there's a lot going on. Um, there's, another, there's a standard one here, isn't there? Yep. Um, I mean, you know, we started with a nice looking bike in the first place and that's the first trick of customising a bike. Start with a good one. Um, <laughs> that makes life a lot easier. But this feels and looks hugely different with a lot of small important details. So let's go into the detail. Okay. So the wheels, obviously a huge part of this build and the silhouette of the bike for me. I'm a huge fan of the big fat tyre on a 16 inch rim and, uh, and historically, it's been a big thing for custom builds for the past kind of 10, 15 years, but it hasn't really done any favours to the handling. But what no. gave me the confidence to do this on this bike was actually the fact that um, you get tyre companies like Avon building tyres like these that actually go around corners. <laughs> um, and these were built by These were Hagen. built by Hagen, yep. Uh, custom rims, custom spokes, custom shocks. So, so shock we, at we the went back. to them for, for all those bits. Fant well, actually, let's, let's get a look at the back as well, because um, what I really wanted was um, the, the old school looking shrouded shock. I just think it looks classy and it kind of ties to the, to the fork as well. Yep. It's kind of like a flipped Well, it simplifies fork. it a lot. You don't have to worry about that spring and everything. It just keeps with this sort of chunky big forms on the bike. You know, a lot better than, let's say, a spring wood, which felt just very light and so on. This is about a bit of meat, a bit of, uh, a bit of toughness, yeah. a lot of toughness. Uh, sort of an urban London bike. Uh, and so we felt it really matched really well with all of these big forms we have in here. The, the, the tires, the big old round tank, the, the big old uh, lump of the right side cover here. It all kind of fits together for us. Yeah, there's a lot of really nice, big, bold, organic shapes. Mm. I mean, I, I always go on about this kind of cartoon thing. If you, <laughs> if you drew a cartoon motorbike, you start with a big kind of oval sort of engine case and then a kind of, you draw some stripes for, yep. the, for the fins and everything on there is round. And I think the, the wheels and the tires really play a huge role in kind of getting that silhouette and it looks fantastic. And, and also, I know from riding um, the Triumph, Bobber uses this similar profile of tyre. Um, I also have them fitted to my, my Thruxton, which has got 16 inch rims on. So I know this is gonna go around corners. Yeah. I know this is gonna handle absolutely brilliantly. And, uh, and knowing it's got nice shocks from Hagen on there and it's all been put together by them, that's brilliant, looks great. Yeah, the rounder profile on these really makes a big difference as compared to some balloon tires, which have a bit more of a squared off uh, profile to them and, and doesn't help you at all for that cornering thing. Um, so it, it also, we like this because of the rounded forms, we felt that these matched really well to the tank in particular. Um, it's not a, a squared off tank at all, it's a very voluptuous tank, and so this balance really just carries it through. Yeah. So the engine and the exhaust, obviously the heart of the motorcycle, <laughs> and one of the things I love about this, this 650 new engine that you guys have built over the last few years, you know, is just how fantastic it looks. You've created a modern engine with something that has that proper kind of organic feel of, of the past, yet you know it kind of performs like a modern machine. And these pipes are beautiful. So, SNS. SNS. And yep. tell me a little bit about, firstly, the fact that the, these are an aftermarket part they make, but also how's this going to affect the engine and how it feels and, and, and what's going to, what, what experience are we going to get? How's it going to sound? Sure. So we've, we've worked with SNS uh, on quite a few projects, um, not the least of which is our, our recent effort in, efforts in flat track um, to, to talk about tuning our engine, getting these uh, exhaust systems set up. This is a, a variation on one they make for flat tracking. Um, we've obviously, it's been adjusted a bit to, to fit this, this bike. 
Um, but it's a uh, biggest thing, of course, is it's a two into one. Yeah. You know, the stock bike comes with a two into two, running right down either side, proper retro cone um, silencers along with it. Uh, but this we should give it a nice little grunty feel. Um, it's going to have a great sound. You know, we, we know this silencer very well from some of our other projects, and mm -hmm. we know it just really livens up uh, the engine quite a bit. Um, obviously, moving to the two into one, you get a, a, a different look to the bike. So it pulls it. It's an easy way of pulling it away from, from the stalker a little bit um, and uh, gets it a bit narrower feeling, too, uh, for your sort of urban maneuvering that, uh, that we talked about in, during the concept. Yeah, and also sound is really important in London. I mean, is. Much, as, uh, much as I can embrace things like the electric revolution, the thing <laughs> I'm always worried about is noise because if, you know, sound is such an important sense uh, for you as a rider to enjoy yep. an engine and a motorcycle and the feel and changing gear and all of the mechanicals, you want to hear that. Mm. But also I want London traffic to hear me. I want, <laughs> I want pedestrian, cyclist and you turning taxis to know I'm coming. So the, the louder this is, the happier I'll be. I just um, wouldn't be right if this bike were quiet, would it? It would just be wrong. <laughs> This is supposed to be a badass London brat. Loud in image, loud in sound. And, uh, and absolutely. The, the, the only one thing um, I, I would like to deal with at this point is obviously... Uh, <laughs> this, this can go there in you the... Go. This can go in contribution the, to the customization. That's me doing my little bit. <laughs> but luckily, I'm wearing bike shed jeans there and they are made of Kovex, so I'm not going to burn my knees on there. Uh, but no, absolutely fantastic. And it just, it looks the part. The pipe just frames the engine. And it's got, a, again, more of that kind of muscular contribution. Mm. And, and, and how do you think it will make the engine feel compared to stock as well? Will, it, will torque be in a different place? Is it going to rev differently? How the fueling, is that going to work? It shouldn't, it shouldn't change it too much from the base performance um, characteristic. You know, everything else has largely stayed the same. Um, like I said, you'll, you'll probably feel a bit gruntier. That's going to be a bit poppier sort of feeling. So as you're, as you're rolling... Will it backfire on the, when I throttle off? I mean, obviously... I, I don't know, honestly. We, mm. we haven't tried this one yet we haven't run it with this yet so yeah. we will um, and we'll let you know but it's it's very possible because obviously this is different from stock um, and so your your ECU won't be tuned for it yeah um, so we'll maybe see if we can uh, play with that a little bit but in theory it'll it'll pop um, this reminds me a little bit of the old Empire build we did yeah um, that obviously removed all the all the uh, electronics and everything and so when on 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 the uh, D cell it definitely well, it was a bit rompy, a little bang, pop, pop, pop. I quite like that. Yeah. Maybe not great for fuel efficiency, <laughs> but, but um, good for waking up the neighbours. People will definitely hear you coming. Letting people know you're slowing down to a junction is very important. Yes, quite. Okay, so let's talk about lighting, indicators, instruments. Uh, now, we've got some great stuff from Motor Gadget hmm. um, and, and a few bits, but I, I really want to start with this headlight, Cal, because <laughs> you guys have made this. Yeah, uh, it came from one of the uh, sketches from one of our guys, um, and obviously it's... We, doesn't exist, uh, so we had to make it. We had, we had looked at different aftermarket options and so on, and just none of them quite fit uh, on these forks. And we've had to modify them anyway, so it's just well, might as well just just make it. And so uh, we worked with our uh, our cast team, com uh, computer aided styling, and they modeled it up for us just based on the sketch, uh, a couple of little iterations, and then uh, we 3D print it. A little bit of reinforcing in the back because mm. the 3D printing can be can be a little bit delicate, uh, so it's reinforced then with fiberglass and. And here we are, it's mounted up. It looks absolutely fantastic. And, um, you know, definitely, definitely, I mean, it looks exactly like the drawings, which is great. <laughs> and, and it has, I mean, this, this sort of style is, is kind of coming to its own a little bit yeah. and, and has been sort of done on a few different custom bikes. There's a few people where you can buy mm. similar looking things, but it's, this is absolutely perfect for the bike. I do wonder if you're not going to get a lot of emails saying, uh, please, could you start making this? We're always happy to get those emails. It, yeah. it helps us make decisions down the line. Good, so, good. You know. Maybe a little bit of side business out the back door, <laughs> um, could, but absolutely comment. fantastic. But should we lower the bike down so we can look at the instruments and, and all the rest of it? So that's the Dan, thank you, Dan, pressing the magic button. Um, so we've got um, this tiny little speedo, which is motor gadget, although it looks very kind of old school and analog. I'm sure there's a bit of tech going on in there somewhere. And, um, we've, and also um, these fantastic swept back bars, um, which are, now these are part of the back kit, yes. aren't they? Yes, yeah, so we- But we'll, we'll come back to the Back to back. But, yeah, we'll come back to back because I want to talk about that a little bit because they make quite a lot of really cool parts. Mm. So we've got this um, small speedo here, which is fantastic. Love that. That's been, at the moment, welded into the original top yep, yoke. It's the original top yoke that we've uh, milled out and then placed the, uh, removed obviously the, the lock barrel that used to be in here. We have a, a lock barrel that goes down the center. Um, replaced it and used actually some of the, the space for this, uh, for that lock barrel to, to place the meter in. 
Yeah. Uh, welded it all up. Uh, this is a custom machine part as well. Then welded the two together. Um, and now we're just, you know, as you can see, we're still cleaning up the area. We'll probably add in some more welding to close off the front a bit and so on. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, it's come out really, really happy with that, that part in particular. And then there's more bits. So we're going for um, these Moblaze, um, more from stuff from Motor Gadget, bar end indicators, yep. uh, because these can be seen from the back and the front. Uh, they can, which particularly is, with these bars, you know, hanging yeah, out there. Yeah, <laughs> especially with these super <laughs> wide bars. Um, and round the back, we have a very, very tiny um, LED rear light, which is going to be kind of Frenched into this rear subframe here, yep. um, which is very, very pretty. Um, hopefully bright enough. Should be. Generally Should be. speaking, having used this kind of stuff before, it is much brighter than you might imagine. And Indeed. really does do a good job of letting people know they're behind a motorcycle yeah. and it's just put its brakes on. So that is absolutely fantastic. But that leads us nicely on to the rest of the design of the bike. So let's talk about the styling of the bike, the aesthetics. I mean, it's a pretty looking thing in the first place <laughs> with a really nice fuel tank and a really pretty engine. But I see you've put quite a lot of work into stuff that other people might not notice. Mm. Um, you know, things like, um, you know, we were talking earlier about the fact that the line of the kick up of the subframe follows the line through this side panel, which matches the line where the engine goes from metal to, to black. And all of that is one line. And in the paint job, which we've got sort of partially described in the drawings up on the wall, we're going to have this line here, which then follows through to the engine yep. with black at the front and the back of the back. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I'm sensing your input into a lot of that. Well, so it's one of those things where um, when you look at a motorcycle, if the, the a person's response to the motorcycle is going to be immediate, you're either going to really like it or really not, or just feel meh, meh about it, it's okay. To get somebody to just respond immediately, positively to a motorcycle, you have to make sure all the lines make sense in relation to each other. If you've got parts just sort of hanging out and not being related to the whole thing, it's harder to make somebody like it. So when we when we went to customize, obviously you have a lot more freedom on a custom bike to do this than uh, in a production bike where you have considerably more restrictions. Um, we could really tune that quite a bit, get everything just at the right just at the right angle. Um, and so we, you know, when we add, once we add the paint job in there, you're going to have this wonderful sort of X yeah, just bisecting and landing right, yeah. in, right in the motor, of course, in the heart of the bike. Um, and then everything else then relates to that. You know, this, this straight line going right through, your, you've got your really beautiful upright, you know, city riding posture here, a lot of confidence in everything. Um, and then you've got that really grounding plane just running right into the engine. Um, and so there's all these little, little tweaks from the, you know, the angle of the, of the subframe here. Um, which required a lot of adjustment and mock-ups. Mm. I think we've got another you well, know, one of the say, variations there. Because this, you'd have thought, would have been perfectly good. But then you guys realized that on the original bike, that the, the, fr the, um, the subframe actually steps down in size and yep. there's a lip. Whereas you guys made this, put it on and went, no, it Doesn't needs to be work. chunky. It needed to be chunkier. About everything on the bike is chunky, so yeah. it really didn't make sense to have. Um, it's such a, a prominent feature. Um, be anything less than that, so we had to remake it entirely, particularly to, to fit in the, uh, the tail lamp. Yeah. So that's a tricky thing. It's a, it's a little thing, but it's a very tricky thing to get right. Um, as you say, we then looked at the lines even of the, the exhaust. We've uh, modified the uh, pillion foot peg uh, brackets. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, I saw that there's been quite a lot of work put into probably quite a <laughs> subtle shift in position. It looks almost as though they've been flipped. Yep. So the, the idea was to or get, that, sides get that sound sort of just pop up, kick up at a nice angle matching to the subframe. So everything just sort of flows all the way through the bike. Um, along the top here, we've got uh, the, the, the sort of the lid of our side panel right into the engine, right through the front wheel. And then just down here, we've got the same thing, but wrapping up uh, into the motor following the exhaust line. So all these little things that we just, we just geek out about, you know? Yeah. You know, doing it in the sketch is actually quite easy, but getting into the, the reel is always where it becomes tricky because this needs to work in every view. So doing it in a side view is one thing, mm. but quite often you'll do something in a side view and then realize it does something else when you're looking at it from a different angle. Yeah. And so you always have to go back and check and it requires a, a ton of tweaking here and there to get it right. Just, just that cut in the side panel, that took several iterations because we did it exactly in the sketch mm. and it didn't work because it didn't line up in certain views. So it was about adjusting it so it would work no matter where you were standing on the bike. Yeah, now the other part of this, of the kind of the geeky part of it and then having bits that are sort of 
got that kind of flow. Um, these handlebars, <laughs> uh, which I mentioned earlier, I love this kind of swept back bar yes, position. Yeah. Now, actually, these come from Bach. These come from Bach. And there's a few other bits from Bach as well, which, and I want to give them a, a bit of credit for the work that they've been doing yeah. on bikes like yours, because they, they do some really nice kits, don't they? And some of these parts are from um, those kits. They use some amazing parts. Um, we had the pleasure of working with them last year for uh, the Gallinella build, we presented at Wheels and Waves. Um, and that's been, that was sort of the beginning of a really wonderful you know, relationship. And so when we got done with our first conversations with you about the concept of the bike and how you wanted the, the bars to be quite wide and everything, mm. we already knew that they, they had that option. And so went straight to Bach. Um, we also grabbed the fenders front and rear from them. Right, yeah, they're and, great. You know, we've, we've adjusted exactly. them a little bit yeah. just to, to uh, match in with the bike a little bit, you know, sh shorten here, tweak there. In, in the spirit of customization. Yeah. Um, but really for me, it's, it's actually these bars that define um, that stance of the bike um, as, a, as a city, as a tough sort of bruiser of a, of a motorcycle. You're gonna be riding on there with the hands quite wide. There's gonna be no doubt that you're coming kind of a thing. So that, that really changes a lot for me. But you know what I also like is, is the fact that you guys are using the original risers. Yep. Because again, you know, it's all very nice having parts made out of CNC machine <laughs> and, and you could have made a brand new top yoke. But there's something nice about these original curved forms and you've got so many organic curves here. If this all got kind of too sharp edged mm. and machined, I think it would look wrong. Um, okay, well, there's, there's something really nice about taking what you have and modifying it as opposed to throwing it away and yeah. putting something all new on. I think for, for us, that's really a lot of the fun of working on the bikes that we design mm. is finding a way to use what we've done for production and tweak it. And it's, a, it's a more of a challenge because you have something that exists that you have to work around. Um, uh, and, but there are, you know, of course, opportunities in that because it leads you down paths you didn't expect. Whereas if just replacing it, you just go from scratch, you can do whatever. Yeah. Um, so that's been a lot of fun actually with this build. We are really trying to find ways of using what we have for into it to a new effect and to work with these new parts that we've added, such as the Bach parts or, or the the SNS uh, exhaust and everything. Tuning that all in um, has has been a real pleasure. Yeah, but it also means that those existing parts don't have anywhere to hide, which is nice because the top <laughs> and the bottom yoke look nice. I mean, I really like the original, just normal levers. Yep. You know, the original kind of master cylinder setup. I mean, it shows that all of this stuff is really simple, clean lines, nice curved forms. Indeed. Well, don't change it if you don't need to. You know, it, if it's mm. something that works, why, why change it out? It's just, it's, it's extra then. Which is a great lesson for any <laughs> custom builder or modifier. Um, I mean, I, I was talking to one of the guys earlier and saying that, um, you know, obviously this is a custom build that you guys have, have kind of put a lot of work into mm. and a lot of kind of making original parts and things. But actually with the Bart kit, there's a lot of stuff you can do. I mean, they, they do a subframe loop that you can yep. chop in. They do a seat that then works with that. They do a, a kit that mounts a small speedo in, mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I think they maybe relocate the ignition as well. So yep. there's a lot of bits you can do, and you could put these bars on the bike. Um, I mean, if, if you actually went to Hagen and got them to build you a set of wheels, you could actually start approximating this kind of thing. I mean, that, that's the, the fun thing, is that really with the, the amount of custom parts that are now getting a, becoming available uh, for, for the, the twins, uh, the Interceptor and the GT, you can really change the character of the bike quite a lot without shopping anything. Um, you know, you can you can just buy bolt-on, and you you know front end, as you're saying, the exhaust system, everything can just be bolt-on. You don't need to need to have a complicated shop or anything to do it, and you can create something that's really your own just by how you combine the different things from different makers, whether it's Bach being you know put together with SNS or whatever that combination that you want. You can make your own bike with with really relatively little tools. So let's talk about the paint, because obviously, you know, that's going to be the finishing touch and also upholstery and things. And with the original design, here's that X that you were talking about earlier yep. in terms of framing the engine. Um, and upholstery, very important. Um, it's got to be comfy and look good. And uh, we opted for this kind of quilted design, which is very much about Bike Shed East London. It's like our booths and our Chesterfield <laughs> sofas. So we've got some leather swatches here, proper leather, obviously. And uh, this one looks great. So yeah. if this is the one we're going for, then yep. I'm very happy. That's the one we're looking at. We've, uh, we've already talked with our, our seat guy and uh, he's gonna, he's already knows how to do all the buttons and everything for the Chesterfield look. Uh, so it's gonna be properly, properly representative of, of the bike shed's uh, aesthetic. I Fantastic. Think. I mean, yeah. let, let's, let's look at where it's gonna be because um, 
So that on here is going to look really, <laughs> really good. Different and interesting and maybe a bit more over the top than I would have in one of my standard paint everything black. Oh, that's going to be a nice shade of grey. It's, exactly. cl it's close, it's close. Shouldn't feel too uncomfortable. But um, so the paint is going to, I mean, looking at the, the picture, the line's going to come through here from yep. the front of the fuel cap. It's going to cut right through the engine and then right down through there. Yeah. Um, which is great. But one of the bits I'm most excited about, the... Uh, secret compartment exactly so we, we are still sourcing a, a proper flask for you this will all be lined in the same leather as the seat yeah so everything will hold together um and uh, we're working on a nice little um sort of pouch for it to sit in so when you pop that open it comes right out at you yep pull out your flask on a cold winter's night or whatever as you're riding around and and there you go so with, with obviously health and safety warnings with health and in safety there warnings, that, that pop out and say don't drink and drive. In fact, on the graphic we have a, a nice big emergency label uh, right across the. <laughs> the top there. Love it, and obviously the contents need to come from the right parts of Scotland. Of course, of course excellent. Of course. Nothing um, but the best. No, and so how? Because obviously you've got this kind of part on top. Is that is that part of that, or is that part of the paint? How's that going to? This is going to be. We we have been playing around with different ways of making this part you know from from opening up in two ways opening out opening up um, we finally decided on this opening full out uh, for access, getting better access to the interior um, and so this had originally been a, a lid that we were going to have on it right but then we decided that we really liked the surface change coming yeah. through it so it wasn't yeah. just a graphic painted on there there was actually a change in the surface as well and so we mm. kept it on there for that reason it's going to be nicely uh, blended in um, with uh, the graphic line across it and then the warning labels um, along the bottom of that, just to make sure you're clear. Okay, so we've talked about all the detail, um, and I, I think the only thing that really remains is for me to sit on it. Um, if it Dan, could you uh, press, yeah, press the lowering yeah, buttons? We've got to make sure it fits, <laughs> as it's a bespoke tailored item. Obviously a bit taller than it would normally be because it's on a paddock stand. There it is. Okay, that is <laughs> absolute <laughs> perfection. Looking good, looking good. Yeah, that's the riding position. That's where you feel like you're king yep. of the road. Everyone's going to hear you coming. <laughs> Bit of a blip of the throttle. Absolutely fantastic. Brilliant. Um, look, I'm really, really chuffed. This is fantastic. I was excited to come and see it. I'm even more excited now I've seen it in the flesh. It looks brilliant. I think it's a great testament to the, to the donor bike. Hmm. Um, and, and, uh, and I think we all knew it was going to look great. So thank you very much. We're very happy that you're happy and it uh, gives us the confidence to just keep on going and uh, finish her up for you. Obviously one of a hundred, right? Because you're oh, going to be yeah. selling no, loads of these. No doubt, no doubt. Perfect. <laughs> well, um, I guess I've got no more excuses um, to just keep on rattling on about the bike. Next time you guys see this on camera, um, really we should have it with the engine running. Have it with the engine running at the bike shed. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, to make sure you don't miss out on what happens next with the big reveal and the first ride, make sure you subscribe to Bike Shed's YouTube channel.